I'm going to fuck you up at the last minute. People keep on saying, oh Matt, your circles are brilliant. I fucking beg to differ. <laughs> My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about uh, two-stroke, let's sort that fucking bit out straight away, two-stroke, single ring or dual ring uh, pistons. So I think this has probably come from a guy who does, uh, maybe I'm just guessing, but does uh, moped, you know, scooter tuning and all the rest of it and what have you. You'll find some kits have single rings and some have dual rings. Why? would you want to differentiate from either so uh, your piston rings obviously seal the cylinder and as soon as they've been bedded in and sealed they never wear out ever again if you ask mortal man he's a fucking muppet is that guy <laughs> any mode um, so if you have one ring it's cheaper <laughs> to manufacture rings are actually quite expensive to manufacture and you can tell it reflects the price where if you go and buy a bolt or something, you know, an axle bolt or something like that, this thing's fucking well heavy, this thing's really big, it's been uh, cold rolled, cold work, stamped and God knows what. That's an axle bolt and that's actually quite a tasty piece of steel. That's quite heavy, quite big. When you pick up your piston ring, you're like, fucking hell, is that it? 25 quid for fucking two. That's ridiculous. Piston rings are uh, quite uh, difficult to manufacture because the fact of the matter is it is an open ring. It's just like it's not like making a washer and easy to make perfectly perfectly round. When I do get around to it very soon to do the uh, easy engine, you'll see what of a fucking dickhead I have to go through to manufacture my own piston rings. Any road, um, it's lower friction. There is one ring instead of two, so if you look at your piston ring there's only that end of the piston ring where if you have two there's one and then there's two so there's more friction so there's more resistance however it works you know everything's a compromise I'll keep on saying this in engineering you do not get a free lunch um, you only have one ring to seal which means that if any gases do make it past it's that's it you're gonna start losing compression because there is only one ring where with your second ring there is a nice backup um, a lot of your heat, and I'll put the picture up now, I can't remember it is, it's like 40%, 35% or 30% or something, but all the heat that goes into your piston, most of it goes out through your rings, and if you have one ring, that means that the thermal loading on that ring is a hell of a lot higher, which means that usually that ring has got to be made out of something a bit sexier, some kind of special chromoly, or something like that, than the regular cast iron rings, or coated rings, and so on. Uh, obviously if you have two rings it's more resistance but then you have two rings to transfer that heat it also means that you're more likely to keep your combustion gases and reduce gas gas blow by um, because you have two you know it's like there's your number one top compression ring and there's your safety little bugger right behind it where with this you've only got one so which is better <sighs> You know, don't worry about it. The fact of the matter is, is they've done testing on the cylinder kits that they're selling you. They're quite happy with one. Um, you know, is it something that's designed to fail? People say that about things. Do you know how fucking hard it would be to design something to fail? Because you've got to remember, it's got to work for so long and then it's got to die. Well, with an engine, you could go, well, that's great. It works because it fits onto the piston. When we run the engine, it dies. But it can't do that. It's got to work for so long. And generally what happens is, is when things work, they continue to work until the environment changes or something weird happens that's bad. Or, you know, they start to fail generally due to wear, which is usage. Trying to design something to fail is actually really quite difficult. I hear it all the time. And there are instances where this has happened uh, in engines, not really one that I've ever seen, but in other things... Um, you know other things where they can cheap out and you know bung a ceiling or something that's just cheaper you know that will not last as long um, as the proper seal or something that should go in there but yeah this all the time this you know it's been designed to fail after five years washing machines washing machines are the best ones people say oh washing machines are only designed to run four or five years now fucking bollocks 
The fact of the matter is, is you are demanding more from your washing machine nowadays. You want to do this spade and easy iron and fucking this, that and the other and play a jig and, you know, suck you off now and then and, and so on and so forth. The more complexity you put into these machines, the more likely it is going to break. That's why engineers love simplicity. Simplicity is wonderful because there's less things to, to go wrong. There are less failure modes. Um, you know, washing machines nowadays. The other thing is, is cost. Is back in the day, my my granddad paid fucking two hundred quid for this washing machine. Yes, when he bought that washing machine, two hundred quid was a thousand pounds. You fucking muppet. You know, nowadays you get a two hundred and fifty pound washing machine. Well, that's a, f a quarter of what it should cost. Still does a bloody good job after five years, and then eventually it fucking dies. You know what I mean? If you want real quality, go and spend the fucking money. There are washing machines out there for two thousand pounds, and I'm sure they last fucking fifty years. Any road. I hope that makes sense. We've gone from pistons to washing machines somehow. Uh, someone needs to put me out of my misery. And I'll see you in a bit.